Little Bighorn, 1876, the most debated battle in U.S. history. Clouded by the narrative of American exceptionalism, uncovered by modern historiography. In this video, we will look at the Native American account of the battle, as it is proven more accurate by archaeology, and shed light on what is commonly thought of as Custer's last stand. In 1868, the U.S. attempted to confine Lakota and Cheyenne tribes to a reservation as U.S. settlers moved to encroach upon their land. Chief Nathanka Eotik of the Lakota, also known as Sitting Bull, refused to join this reservation system and was deemed as hostile by the U.S. government. Knowing what this would lead to, Eotik began forming a defensive coalition of Lakota, Dakota, and Cheyenne tribes. In 1874, Gold was discovered in the Black Hills, which were inside the Sioux Reservation. After failing to buy the land from the natives in 1875, the U.S. launched a military invasion against the Plains tribes in 1876. The invading force was divided into three separate armies. The Dakota Column, under General Alfred Terry, would attack from Fort Abraham. The Montana Column, under Colonel John Gibbon, would advance from Fort Ellis and General R. Crook would invade from Fort Fetterman. The invasion began with an army under Crook advancing north until he was checked by Chief Tsunki Witko's army of the Oglala and Cheyenne. And was pushed back in defeat at the Battle of Rosebud on June 17th. From the east, Terry would advance, but on the 25th, he detached the 7th Cavalry Regiment to scout ahead under the command of Major General George Custer. Custer was an infamous cavalry commander throughout the American Civil War. His track record was full of recklessness, to the point where he was seen as hazardous by his own superiors. His conduct towards Native Americans on top of that proved him to be either psychopathic or just plain mad. When he heard that the natives' camp was nearby, he made his own plans to take native women and children as hostages, so he could exchange them back to the Lakota for their land. Upon approaching the native camp, Custer planned a two-pronged attack to capture as many civilians as quick as possible. The plan initiated when Colonel Reno was ordered to the southern side of the camp. Reno followed his orders, but instead of capturing civilians, his men dismounted and opened fire. They killed several wives and children of Lakota Chief Fizi. Fizi's cavalry and infantry rushed to their people's defense. Reno had to retreat to a nearby tree line where infuriated natives pursued and continued to overwhelm them. Meanwhile, Custer had made his way to the other side of the camp before receiving news of Reno's situation. He then ordered one company of his men to attack the camp's northern flank as a diversion while he attempted to help Reno. However, the natives were expecting this and hid more riflemen in the tall grass. By this time, Reno retreated to high ground in a panic. Fizi's troops then moved north to help push back Custer's main force. Before being able to aid Reno, Custer's entire contingent was forced to retreat to high ground as well. It is rumored that they used the corpses of their own horses as a defensive barrier. At this point, Chief Tsunki Witko mustered a detachment of cavalry and took off northward. Custard and the natives exchanged volleys until Witko's cavalry returned with a devastating charge that Custard himself did not survive. The natives were still not finished and moved their infantry towards Reno's position. They took distant pot shots whilst hiding in the tall grass, 
likely seeking revenge against Reno. Reno's men quickly dug rifle pits to fortify their position. Reno was pinned down until after 9 p.m. when reinforcements arrived under Marshal Benteen. There was minimal gunfire that continued until the next day when the native forces withdrew and the tribes of the camp migrated safely away from the valley. Custer's army took 268 casualties while the natives lost 135 soldiers and 10 civilians. With the annihilation of Custard's men, there was no disguising the U.S. Army's defeat. Although the battle didn't save the Native Americans from their downfall, it showed that they were not going down without a fight. Thank you to our artist, Silent Rebel Art, for her beautiful portraits. Please follow her Instagram account in the description below. And thank you for watching. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you wish to see the channel grow and win the chance to make suggestions for future videos.